Hello, I'm Jesse the Planners, and I'm reminding you to like the video, subscribe to our channel, and hit the bell for notifications. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, I'm Jesse Duplantis. And I'm Kathy Duplantis. And I'm excited about the boardroom chats. Yeah. You know, Kathy, so many people are just really loving these boardroom chats. I'm loving it, too. I, I'm liking them. I mean, it's just such a blessing. And uh, so I hope you enjoy it. Tell other people about what we do here. We do the faith, the facts, and the boardroom chats. Of course, preaching on Sunday morning at the Covenant Church. You're the pastor of it. I get to preach some. She gets to preach some. It's just such a blessing of the Lord. So I hope you're enjoying these things. And thank you for your wonderful comments and also for your uh, criticisms. I, I, I've learned something about that. And, you know, some people don't like to be criticized. But the Bible says iron sharpeneth iron. True. And, and, and you know, so I don't mind. You know, I've had sometimes, sometimes my staff, they don't do it anymore. Many years ago, they try to hide some of that. I said, no, let people say what they're going to say. Because I'm not trying to change people's minds in any way, shape, or form. I'm going to just tell you what I believe and what I think so you'll know where I'm at at all times. It's a blessing of the Lord. I want to get into something. In fact, it's been on me for quite a while. I think last Sunday we were preaching at the church about uh, the success of Jesus' ministry. Only say what Jesus, and Jesus said, I only say what my father says and do what my father says to do. What people don't seem to understand is that whatever Jesus has done, doing, and going to do, we must do exactly like him. You talk about a perfect image of that, and I'm going to prove that. And I'd like you to go to Ephesians chapter 5, verse 1. And I, the old King James, first I want Kathy to read that out of the Amplified first, if you don't mind. Okay. And then I'm going to go to that Passion Translation. Maybe you can get it on the, uh, or the message one. But read Ephesians 5, verse 1, uh, just the verse, in uh, verse 1 in the, uh, the Amplified. The Amplified says, Therefore be imitators of God, copy him, and follow his example, as well-beloved children imitate their father. Copy him. Now, why did the Apostle Paul say that in the book of Ephesians? Why? Go with me to Genesis chapter 1. We'll flip all the way over, then we're going to get into this. Genesis chapter 1, we'll go back to Ephesians 5. But Genesis chapter 1, when God is creating this planet and all the things around it, I like what he says in verse 26. Genesis chapter 1, he says, And God said, Let us make man in our image, after our likeness. So don't tell me I can't act like God talk like God, be like God, smell like God, when God created us to do that. Let me read it again. And God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness. Underline that in your scripture. Then watch this. This is what we should do. And let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the fowl of the air, over the cattle, over all the earth, over ever creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. Earth. Verse 27. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him. Male and female, he created he them. Not just man, them, male and female. Now, Kathy, I want you to read in the Amplified verse 26 of Genesis and verse 27. God said, let us, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, make mankind in our image after our likeness, and let them have complete authority over the fish of the sea, the birds of the air, the tame beasts, and over all the earth, and over everything that creeps upon the earth. So God created man in his own image, in the image and likeness of God. Ooh. He created him, male and female. He created them. Now, you see, and now, let's go back to, uh, go back to Ephesians chapter 5, verse 1. It says, copy God. Hmm. Now, why does people get mad? When you, when you copy God. Now, what did God say to do? Jesus said in St. John 14, verse 12, go do the work that I do and greater than these shall you do because I go to my father. Mm -hmm. Now, Jesus expects us to do that. Otherwise, he wouldn't have said that in the book of St. John. Paul writes to the church at Ephesus, at, uh, be you therefore, and the King James says followers, it means imitators, or copy God. Mm -hmm. and all that he does. So how can anybody say healing is not for today? When by Jesus' stripes, we were healed. How can anybody say prosperity is not for today when heaven is so gloriously prosperous and he said his will be done in earth, on earth, as it is in heaven? In heaven, that's right. Male and female. How can anybody say you can't be a pastor and preach the gospel because you are a woman? When he said he created male and female created he them to created do what? Mankind. Right. Yeah. To imitate God. Yes, that's right. 
Now, don't complicate this crazy thing. You understand what I'm saying? People try to complicate those things. Get the ego out. Get all that junk out of there and be the person God created you to be, which is in his image and his likeness. Now, I notice, I believe in the Amplified, I said, and the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost. The Trinity. So, the Trinity. Oh, some people don't believe in the Trinity. Oh, good Lord. He created us as a Trinity. You have a spirit, housed in a soul, and clothed in a body. Do you see that? Mm -hmm. so, so, what I do is when I preach the gospel, I imitate him. I follow him. I copy him. I do what he tells me to do. Right, which is why we have what we, evangelistic ministry from Amen. the beginning. Jesus went about healing people. He says he went to the cities and the villages. Right. Why is he it healing everywhere. and doing good to all that were oppressed? Healing of the all. Devil. Oh, not just some. And you know, but I find a lot of people when they pray, they, they, they think they're at the gospel casino. They're going to shoot the dice. You know how God is. Sometimes he does and sometimes he don't. Kathy always does. Sometimes always. we don't receive. He never denied anyone no, healing no. that came to him. He can't give you what you don't want. You can't have what you preach against. Now, you know, see, we try to intellectualize God, which is the dumbest thing, anybody, because he's so infinite, it's impossible to intellectualize God because he's beyond your intellectual activity, your range and research, or your induction and reasoning. So what I'm talking about today is imitating God. I'm going to ask you the question now. Do you imitate God? Now, what else does God do? Verse 2. Verse 2. And it says, walk in love. In mm -hmm. love. It's not easy to walk in love. You have to love people you don't like. So that's what God does. Now, let me say this. It's going to shock you. There's some people God don't like at all. One time I had a man just drove me nuts. I mean, you know who I'm talking about, this man. I mean, he just drove me nuts. And one day I just was frustrated. I said, God, I don't like this man. He said, I don't like him neither. <laughs> he said, but I went to the cross and died for him. You see, you don't have to like everybody, but you have to love everybody. Jesus went to the cross. He, loved he didn't like the Pharisee or the Sadducee or the Zealot. He called them snakes, hypocrites, and vipers. But he went to the cross and died for him. For God so loved, St. John 3, 16, mm -hmm. the world. Now, I want you to read verse 2 in that Amplified of Ephesians 5, verse 2. You read verse 1. Well, read verse 1 again and then go into verse 2. <clears throat> verse uh, Chapter 5, verse 1, Amplified Version says, Therefore, be imitators of God, copy him, and follow his example, as well-beloved children imitate their father, and walk in love, esteeming and delighting in one another, as Christ loved us and gave himself up for us, a slain offering and sacrifice to God for you so that it became a sweet fragrance. That's why I say you ought to smell like God. Mm. We ought to be sweet. See what I'm saying? Now, that's what I'm talking about, being an imitator, doing what he, go do what he does, say what he says, and do what he does. That is so simple that you need a good theologian to help you misunderstand it. Yeah. Now, watch this. Well, you know, but just you kids just can't have everything. When the Bible said, I will supply all your need according to my riches in glory. If you delight yourself, therefore, in the Lord, he'll give you the desires of your heart. He also said, the Lord's your shepherd and you shall not want. So there's your needs. There's your desires and there's your he wants. wants. That's right. That's not just spiritual. That's spiritual. That's physical. That's financial. That's every area of your life. Now, the reason why I know that and that you should have it, let's go back to Genesis chapter one. Watch this now. Now, this is what we should be doing. 24 7, seven days a week. Verse 26. And God said, Let us make man in our image after our likeness. That means his character. Mm -hmm. And let them have dominion. Oh, over what? Fish of the sea? Fowl of the air? So when you're fishing, you ought to catch fish. Fowl of the air over the cattle? Over all the earth, over ever creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. You even got dominion over some creeps. Think about that, glory to God. Now watch this. What do you have dominion over? That's where I want to get to. See, if you're going to be an imitator of God, you got, you, uh, dominion means domain. He had made well, you kings and priests. In the it calls it complete authority. Oh, well, say that. Well, read it. Uh, I'm, uh, I like that. And God said, let us, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, make mankind in our image and after our likeness and let them have complete authority. A complete authority. Over the fish of the sea, the birds of the air, the beasts, the, over the earth, all, over all of the earth and over everything that creeps upon the earth. And Kathy, the reason why we have complete, complete authority, authority, because God gave us dominion over that. Mm -hmm. You know, when we went from a standard uh, regular, what do you call it, regular time to daylight savings time, 
I don't think the gorillas knew about it. I don't think the fish knew about it. I mean, the gorillas didn't get up and say, what happened to the owl? What's going on? Because he gave us dominion. Yet so many people say, well, you know, you just got to take what comes your way. That's not true. <clears throat> see, a kingdom and a king has a domain or dominion. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? So what are, you have dominion over your body. So maybe the devil's attacking your body. Uh, you know, and maybe, you, maybe you have, oh, I feel it in my spirit. Some of you may have stage four cancer. They give you all kinds of stages. You have dominion over cancer cells. What are cancer cells? I asked the head of St. Jude's Hospital about 30 years ago. I was on a plane. Mm -hmm. And I said, could you give me the definition of cancer in layman's terms? I mean, don't give me these long medical terms, you know, all that kind of stuff. And he thought for a minute, Kathy. Well, not a minute, but I mean, you know, it seemed he for a few seconds. He paused. And he, he said this, rebellious cells. I said, what'd you say? He said, cells in rebellion. In other words, cells get out of line. Watch this. Uh, the way the body was functioned or created to work and goes going all over the body and this talks to the other cells. Hey, why don't you join us? You can grow as fast as you want. Do anything you want to do. And that, that's out of order. And when you got something out of order, then you, something's broke. And then it takes over and destroys itself in the process. Mm. You see what I'm saying? So you have dominion over cancer. Mm -hmm. Diabetes. I don't care if your family has diabetes, it follows your family. Diabetes, high blood pressure, crippling arthritis, cancer, infectious disorder, heart trouble. What are you saying about it? You take authority over your body because it's been given to you as your earth suit. Right. Now think about that. Jesus, God gave mankind the complete authority. Amen. In a, in a perfect society in the Garden of Eden. Amen. When nothing was out of order. That's right. So he had to have... He, so he covered all the bases, basically, no matter That's what right. rises up. You may, things may be going one day, but all of a sudden it seems to blow up. Yeah. And so God gives you complete authority because whenever that basically says, if get, things get out of order, I'm entrusting you to do what Jesus would do or do what God would do in that situation Amen. and bring it back into order with the words of your mouth. Well, watch this. The reason, when man lost his authority by sin, who got the authority? Satan. We actually gave it to him. So he took our Adam dominion. Adam and Eve did, yes. That's the first Adam. Mm -hmm. But the second Adam, Jesus Christ, got Body it all back. back. So why are we trying to live like the first Adam? That just blows my socks off, man. Man, I got a lot of pairs of socks. I mean, just not some all glow. Why? Why can't we be blessed in the city, blessed in the field, blessed going in, blessed going out? And when I say those things, people go, who do you think you are? Made in God's image and in God's likeness and copying him, smelling right. like him, right. being like him, doing like him. Right. We have to really train our recreated spirits Amen. to be more like God. You often have said yeah. that Jesus, when he came to the earth, had to learn to be human. Yes. And we have to learn to be spirit. So it's, it's a mind renewal process, but we have to start thinking like God Amen. would think in a situation instead of blowing up, let fear uh, captivate oh, our God. hearts. We need to resist fear and speak words of faith that can change every situation. Don't build a highway for Satan to get on to get to you. Like generational curses. Well, you know, it follows that family. That may be true. But how do you get rid of that? Make a generational choice. I choose not to do that. I choose not. See, you choose to get saved. You choose to go to heaven. God don't make you go to heaven. You choose to go to hell. Some people say, I don't believe that. Now, don't change it. Like as if, because you don't believe it, you don't change it. I mean, are you going to change? No. It's still, it's God's law. You see, so be you there for imitation. So instead of thinking somebody's cocky and arrogant, when they said you sow a seed and you get a 30, 60, 100 full return. Well, not, but just, that's just impossible. Oh, my God. Oh, it just drives me nuts. I said, he's you the El Shaddai. You saying it drives you nuts. Well, okay, well, it drives me to eat nuts. How's that? <laughs> okay, I'll eat some pecans or something like that. You see what I'm saying? See, she just corrected me. You see, I own a house. At least I think I do. But we when Kathy goes in the house, that's her dominion. I have complete authority. Complete authority. <laughs> Lord, don't touch that. Don't touch that. Don't do this. You know, whatever. What are you doing? My mother, <laughs> it's the craziest thing when I'm about ready to tell you. When my mom died, she, my dad, my mother told my dad, there's two things you don't touch in this house, Paul. One is the washing machine because you're going to break it. <laughs> you know, they have the old kind before you did all the, the digital stuff. And don't touch that stereo. You understand? You don't touch that stereo. Because you know, mama liked to hear a stereo, you know. Because <laughs> my mother passed away on uh, Easter Sunday, 1982. Now, they had what they call burial policies and stuff like that, you know. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we had to go to the funeral home to make the arrangements, okay? So I asked my dad, I said, Dad, 
Y'all had some burial problems. He said, yes, we did. I, I said, do you know where they are? He said, they're in the stereo. In the stereo. You know, it wasn't, it wasn't just a tabletop. You know, they had a nice piece of furniture way back then. I don't know if they do that much anymore now, but I'm just saying this way. I said, but dad, go get them. Oh, no, I can't go in there. I said, what? He said, I said, no, dad, go, if you know where they're at in the stereo, go get them. Okay, your mama told me not to touch the stereo. I said, mama's dead, dad. He said, she'll come back. <laughs> She'll beat my brains up. He would not touch that stereo. I can't, I can't. Then it dawned on me. Mama still had dominion, and she was in heaven over that stereo. Now, that's funny. It's a true story. I decided, don't get mad at me when I'm going to say this, that I would live healthy. Here's something else. Ooh, I'm going to get some letters on this one. I'm going to be wealthy. I'm going to be everything Jesus said I could be. Jesus was poor. When? 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 You ever hear Jesus saying, I don't know what I'm going to do and I can't make it? We're not going to be able to eat today, guys. We can't go to Capernaum and see uh, uh, my mama because we don't have the money to get over there. Uh -uh, Uh-uh. Uh-uh. We need to be ye therefore imitators of the son of the living God and live on earth like as if you be living in heaven. That's what I want to talk about. This is a very important boardroom chat Mm -hmm. because I'm going to tell you about 99% of most Christians are not living like this Mm -hmm. because they've been told by the church for millenniums, at least two of them, Mm -hmm. well, well, what do you mean? See, that's already a pause. That's already doubt coming. That's a, doubt's a form of atheism. It really, you know, in my new book, I never learned to doubt. And I know nothing about doubt. That's why I am where I am. You know, I, I, I know I'm when I read the, we, we were told not to read the Bible. You never read the Bible until after you got Until I got born again. That's okay. right. Okay. I never have asked you this. When you first, when you picked up, I don't even know where you picked up the Bible at. Was it one of them Gideon it Bibles? It was the Gideon Bible in a hotel room. What did you first read? Do you I remember? Read, I started in the beginning. I didn't know there were a New Testament and Old Testament. I was not familiar with that. Of course, when I, I grew okay, up Catholic, but and I'd heard a few readings, but I never thought about the Bible. Okay, when you so you read Genesis? I began in the book of Genesis, chapter one. What verse did you one. think of when you thought this is God speaking to you? Yeah. Well, I, I well, thought Well, you sound it was like God. a Cajun there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and the Thank Cajun you. came out. Did you hear that Cajun right there? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I, I just was under, I was in awe of all that was happening, learning it for myself for the first time. I remember going to, going through it, and I started getting confused a little bit when I started hearing about the begats. I said, Jesse, what's all of this about? <laughs> you mean, well, see, me, to me, the way I, I, when I started reading it, and I started at page one, you know, now I tell people, if you're going to start reading the Bible, go to the book of John. But I didn't know any of that then. But let me tell you, when I said when I read Genesis chapter 1, verse 1, in the beginning, God, in my mind, what I thought, I said, whoa, this is God talking. This is big. So it wasn't just words on a printed page. What I didn't realize, it was God. In the beginning was the word. The word was God. This is him in written form. Right. The word Say, of God was spoken ooh, so that it would be written. Yeah. And it was written so that it would be spoken. God That's wants it. us to speak and Right. What he has said. And he's given us the same spirit of faith. Yeah. So when you understand that, let's stop. Why don't you start imitating him today? And don't worry about what the world says. They're going to say whatever they're going to say. Mm-hmm. They lost. They don't understand spiritual things. The natural man receiveth not the things of God because they're foolishness unto him. And the Bible said, neither can he know them, much less believe it, because they spiritually discern. A dead spirit can't discern nothing because it's dead. A dead man. I don't know why people are afraid of graveyards. That's the safest place in town. <laughs> if you think about it, cause ain't, ain't nobody coming out going to grab you. You see what I'm saying? But yet, boy, people don't like getting around graveyards and things of that nature. You see, when it's the live people that can hurt you, not, not the dead people. So when Jesus said, be ye therefore followers of God as dear children, and then he said, walk in love. I said, okay, then that's not easy sometimes. I'm have to agree with, I, 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 I got to agree with a lot of people. This is not easy. Well, I've never found anything easy in life. It's not easy to grow up. Mm-hmm. Think about a baby, how many bumps and bruises it, it gets learning to walk. How many times it falls down. Thank God for them thick diapers. Can you hear them? <laughs> the little bottoms hit, boom, you know, something, something like that, you know. And, uh, but I'll tell you what, they, they, they keep going. They will grab something, get up, pull themselves up. Before you know, they're walking around the... Uh, uh, the coffee table or whatever y'all use, and then <laughs> they start crawling and walking. If you got anything in, in cabinets down there, you got to take it all out, stick it up, because they'll eat washing powder. <laughs> they'll just go after it. Why? Because they're wanting to learn. They're learning to be human. You said it earlier. Mm-hmm. It's time for us to learn 
to be spirit. Right. That's you so see, true. spirit. Mm -hmm. And when you understand that, see, Jesus, uh, he had to learn to be human. He didn't go to, just like, just like you have to learn to be spirit. He had to learn to be a baby mm -hmm. because he, he took up on flesh so that he would go through everything that all of us have. One of the wildest things that, I call it wild because it's almost unbelievable, but because God said it, I believe it, that he was tempted in all mannerisms as we were. Mm -hmm. And the first thing, when I read that, I went, why? Because you've been tempted like that. So in other words, he would have you an answer. He would go through what you would go through mm -hmm. so he could give you the correct way to imitate him. Yes, and, and get your victory. And, oh, yeah. Be victorious in whatever yeah. the situation was. I think we talked about this is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. A yeah. couple of boardroom chats back, or maybe it was the last one. But when you understand that, so it's so wonderful to know when somebody said, I've, I've been through that. Oh, you have? Yeah. Um, and they start telling you, then you kind of feel like one and one with them because they walk where you walk and talk where you talk. And, and you know, and that's exactly why Jesus did that. Then the Bible says this without sin. Mm -hmm. Oh, Let's get on that. Now, Bravo Jesse, now this is how, the, this is the typical preacher, Bravo Jesse, you just got the sin of a day. No. Let me say, let me, am I looking at you? Are you looking at me? <laughs> no, Kathy, let me look at no. me. No. No, that is a religious lie. We have all sinned, but we're not all sinners. Now, you notice that when I started talking about that, the, the train started blowing his horn. <laughs> it don't, oh, it, the devil don't want you to get away. From. See, no, I don't sin every day. I don't. Mm -hmm. No, I don't. I, I have sin. But, you know, when I go before God, I go like this every time I pray. Heavenly Father, I reverence your holy name because his name's in us. Mm -hmm. I reverence your mission. I reverence your will and I reverence your holiness. And I say this, not out of fear. If I've committed any sin, iniquity, or trespass, I ask you to forgive me. I repent of it. Lord, this is not about my salvation because I'm saved by grace. Mm -hmm. This is about my sanctification. I'm set apart for holiness. Now watch, what did he say? Be ye holy. Well, how can you be holy if you're sinning every day mm -mm. and you have no other choice? How can you? No, God says you can't. How? By imitating him and copying him. Right, and that's how children learn. They imitate Amen. their parents. Right. You know, so often we, some of it's innate and it's part of their DNA and they automatically have those gestures. Right. Uh, but others are learned behavior. Well, their language. Yeah. They, you hear a kid cuss because they heard their parents cuss or somebody <laughs> on television cusses. It's true. They yeah. just learn from that. They don't know. They, they also just... learn to say, I love you. They learn to hug and kiss and they, mm. people have to be taught some of these yes. things. Yes. And this, can I read the yes. uh, Ephesians chapter five in the message Bible? Yeah, it's so go ahead. powerful. And it's, uh, we read it before we started because right. we loved it, several translations. But it says in verse one, watch what God does and you and, and then you do it, do it like children who learn from prop, learn proper behavior from their parents. Mostly what God does is love. That's verse two. Keep company with him and learn a life of love. Observe how Christ loved us. His love was not cautious, but extravagant. Amen. He didn't love in order to get something from us, but to give everything of himself to us. Okay. Says love like that. All right, go back to that verse. I want to read that myself. I'm going to read it again. You know, you, uh, I, I want to read that again because I watch what God does. Okay. I'm watching. <laughs> glory to God. And then you do it. Okay. That's imitating. Uh -huh. Like children who learn proper behavior from parents. So they're watching their parents. Mostly what God does is love you. Huh. Keep company with him. That's how you mess up is when you walk away from it. But he said he never leaves you, forsake you. Keep company with him and learn a life of love. Okay, I can do that. Observe how Christ loved us. Now, I read it like this. His love was not cautious, but extravagant. Yes, it's so powerful. Do you extravagantly love me? <laughs> I do. <laughs> okay, same here. Praise the Lord. See, that's well, you a, can't get away with that. What did See, I say? this is my issue right here. I'm going to stop, <laughs> stop for a minute. Okay, so okay. Jesse's <laughs> always been the me too kind of guy. I want him the to. The me too? Yeah, what do you mean me he too? He said, you, you have to say, do you, do you love you, me extravagantly? Uh, yes. Okay, there you go. <laughs> 
<laughs> together. With, he oh, said, I see what you're trying to say. Me. You wanted me to say, years, I extravagantly would... love you. That's what you said? Yeah, you could go ahead and say, what, what did you say? <laughs> he said, she just loved me. She's like, I extravagantly, is that right? I extravagantly love you. Do you extravagantly love I me? I extravagantly love you. Hallelujah. Okay. okay. God extravagantly loves us. Oh, that, that's a big word. Just thinking about that is so powerful. Yeah, that's a powerful thing. But it, so. it must be communicated. God communicated his extravagant love to us when he sent Jesus to the earth. And we communicate, we demonstrate that same love when we love others. You, you we say, imitate God and yeah. it changes the world. In fact, that's the problem of the whole world. Nobody's, nobody's really following that example the way God wants us to. And, and if we'd all do that, each one of us, the golden rule is do unto others as you would have them do unto you. I'm telling you, our world would be transformed. In fact, Amen. that's what heaven's going to be like. Well, you know, you heard, I remember you told me you really enjoyed this when I said this. I was preaching, I don't know, it might have been a year or two ago, and somebody was mad at me. I said, you can't hate me more than I love you. And that was beautiful that day. I remember that was spontaneous. Yeah. And I know you had never written that down. No, I never. Uh -uh. And I could tell that it came out of your heart, and it was so powerful because even when people attacked Jesus, they pulled out his beard, they oh, punched man. at him. Spit. He man, extravagantly loved mankind enough to endure that so that he could go to the cross die for the sins of the world, be resurrected, and then help us to live that same overcoming so life and know God and experience this extravagant love personally for ourselves. So if you think of crucifixion, how terrible death that is, that was act actually an extravagant love act mm. that man could come boldly to the throne of grace with a petition and a supplication with thanksgiving. To me, that oh, demonstrates there's, there's no limit to God's extravagant love. No matter what is going on in the world, we can follow his example, be an imitator of him, and love others yeah. into the kingdom. I, loved, I believe I loved you into the kingdom. Oh, I, you were definitely. definitely doing things that weren't lovable. Right. Right. It was not, no, I was not a lovable person. Well, how can I be a lovable person when I was serving the devil? But I loved you anyway. In the you know, natural, he's a killer. He's right? a serial killer. But once I came to know Jesus, something happened within me. That extravagant love of God came in no. my heart, and I was able to look at you, even though you were doing things that were not lovable, and recognize that all the whole reason you were doing that is because you did not know Jesus. Well, you and that saw all it. you needed to do was accept Jesus, and yeah. everything would change. And that was you saw my so salvation true. before I did. God gave. I think. That's well, your a eyes. Grace. Well, you were spiritual. You you were spiritually alive. I was spiritually dead. So you were actually imitating God on what I'd done what I was doing, and what I was going to do. You had made up your mind that you wanted to save husband, for lack of a better way to say it, but that's yeah, true. Yeah, I would pray that, our, that mm -hmm. we would be serving the Lord side by side for the gospel's Amen. sake. Never think I'd ever preach this gospel. I just never done. Never in my entire, I mean, in the, if you, there's just no way. I didn't want to be a Christian. Not that I hated Christians. I mean, I, I've always respected people's beliefs that they wanted to believe that. Sure you do. You know, I always yeah. have. I never had a problem with that. But I thought, well, this is not for me. This is not, when I, you know. And I guess the reason why I said that, because I didn't want it to be. See, well, you don't know about something. You make opinions that are not, that, 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 they're not very weighty. They don't really have a lot of um, um, meat in it. You see what I'm saying? But when I got born again, I thought, man, I mean, you talk about changed. I mean, totally, completely changed. And even today, and I've said it before, when I went to my 50th high school reunion, <laughs> people could not get over. I can't believe that you are preaching good God, man. And because I was a little gangster. That's what I was. I mean, I mean, I enjoyed sinning greatly. In fact, I just never thought of it as sin. I just thought that's what I'm going to do. Well, what I was doing was imitating Satan yeah. in everything he was doing. Well, I changed lords. Right. So don't get mad at me and criticize me because I'm imitating Christ. So... When I go out to preach, I go, to, I go do the work he does, and greater than these shall you do, because I go to my Father. Mm -hmm. Then when he says, whatsoever you shall ask in my name, this is Jesus talking. That's St. John 14, verses 13. Whatsoever you shall ask in my name, I will, uh, that I will do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. So why would anybody want to criticize? I'm just obeying that scripture. Then the, the, then the other verse says, if you shall ask anything in my name, I will do it. Well, I mean, he didn't put limitations on that spiritually, physically, financially. The church world does, the religious world. So I just do that. I just imitated what he said to do. Mm -hmm. And for some crazy reason, I think it's because people have been taught. You have to learn to unlearn some things. There have been a lot of things taught that were not godly, right. that were not God's way of doing things. Right, and, and it's hard to unlearn. Once experience. a habit, you have a habit. Habits are hard to break. Mm -hmm. 
See, and uh, because you become habitual in it, you know what I'm saying? And so, so a lot of you have to learn to unlearn some things. You know, I learn mean, learn to unlearn some things. Learn to unlearn. Well, I, I, for That's example, true. when I heard about speaking in tongues, there was only one word came up in my mind: why? Why? I mean, why? why, why I don't need that. You know, the language well, of heaven. Yes, the language. It's a it's a language that Satan can't understand. Because he's spiritually dead and spiritually alive. But I didn't know that then. Mm -hmm. You know, and yet people today will tell you without even blinking. That tongues is of the devil. Can I make this announcement to the whole world if you watch it? If it was of the devil, I would have found it mm -hmm. when I was a sinner. I found everything else he did. But I didn't find anybody speaking in tongues. I didn't find, no, no. But when I got to a church that believed something to what the intellectual mind is, says is unbelievable. Mm. I heard that. Yeah. And you know, it's not that far fetched. Did you hear that, if, Cajun? Yeah. Why you, I like that. I like that sound. You? Yeah. I, you sound pretty Cajun. Oh, yeah. I'm Cajun to the core. Cool. People ask me all the time, what is a Cajun? Anything they want to be. They don't matter. We do anything we want to be. Praise God. I, I, I heard it at church. Mm -hmm. mm. Do you remember that time we went to tell a, a friend of ours that we spoke in tongues and he said it was of the devil? Mm -hmm. And you just got your Bible out. They his lunch about uh, I showed him being filled with the, the Holy Ghost. Mm -hmm. It was just such a blessing of the Lord. And think about it. It's not so strange because, you know, if oh. we would be going to South America, to a Spanish-speaking country, we don't speak Spanish. I, we wouldn't I, I understand know a couple of words. Como está usted? That's about all of it. Right. I know a few things, too, like <laughs> taco and enchilada. Taco, yeah. <laughs> I know no. this. Me llamo Jesse. Uh, uh, ¿Cuál es la fecha de hoy? What is it? <laughs> what's, what's been, what's, how do you say hello? Ben, uh, uh, hello. <laughs> so, yeah. Hola. Oh, hola. Oh, oh, oh. Something like that, you know what I'm saying? Anyway, but whatever nation, if it's Japanese nation or going to China or something, you wouldn't know that translate, that mm -hmm. language. Mm -hmm. Well, heaven has its own language. That's and right. it communicates with all of mankind, no matter what language you speak. So you can connect with heaven through that power of the speaking in tongues, Amen. the baptism of the Holy Spirit. What I love about, uh, I want to go back to that, Genesis 126, dominion. It's time for you to take dominion over everything in your life, spiritually, physically, and financially, because God gave it to you. And let me tell you why you can have these things. Because when God created this place, there were no sinners. You've heard me say that before. So he created it for his children. He mm -hmm. created it for us. So it's not greed to want something. Can I just flat be honest? I know women like diamonds, okay? Well, guess who created them? God. So if they were bad, he wouldn't have created them. So you can have one. Well, that's greed. No, it's not greed. If that's what you want, what's wrong with that? He created it. I mean, see, that just and makes total sense Bible, to me. Even in Genesis, it talked about how gold was on the top of the ground. Oh, yeah. Even. To do, you know, what, yeah. He called it fine gold. Fine gold. So they could see that. Think about that for a minute. So what's wrong with wanting something you like? So, you know, uh, sometimes we'll be in a mall somewhere and Kathy will go to the Louis Vuitton store and she's looking for something or whatever. I like looking at all the people that come in there, especially when they just, well, their eyes are glazed over, son. <laughs> oh, oh. And there's the men going, oh, Jesus, making the sign of the cross because they know they're going to get hit. You know what I'm saying? But uh, you know what? It makes me feel good when I buy Kathy something she likes. What's wrong with that? You know, well, that's great. I don't think you should have that. Excuse me. I don't think I asked you. And I don't mean that to be rude. God created it, so why couldn't I have it? Whether it be spiritual, whether it be physical, whether it be funny. Why can't I speak in tongues? Well, it's not for today. Well, how did I get it? How come I can't be healed? Well, healed enough for that. Well, bless God, man. There's sickness and disease out there. People need to be healed. The COVID? Uh, cancer? I mean, do you... I mean, God, how can anybody say healing's not for the day? You ought to be able to believe that just out of compassion. Mm -hmm. I mean, my, do you, can you, have you ever been to St. Jude's Hospital in Memphis? You want a good place to support? Support that place. And them children, man, you see them babies? You know, the little, uh, uh, what they call them, uh, like a little line coming out of tubes and it hurt. And you're going to tell me that healing is not for the day? Oh, man, how? I, I, you're not imitating Jesus. Jesus had a hard time. N not healing. The only time he couldn't heal was in his hometown because they didn't accept him. But even then, he healed some. He, healed some. he said, the Bible said he could not do it. didn't say he wouldn't. He said he could not do 
No mighty work except he laid his hand on a few sick folk. Why? Because people say, well, you know, you just, you know, you just got, what do you learn from cancer? What do you learn? You know what I mean? With pain and things. That, no, why not be healthy? Why not be blessed? How about this? You, if you got some dollars, let's say you're doing pretty good and you might walk in a restaurant and, or whatever and there's somebody you don't even know. You just buy their meal. How many times when uh, Meredith, uh, who is my granddaughter, when she was little, she's 13 now because she's big, you know. But when she was little, she would go to the uh, Disney store, I think it was. Mm-hmm. And man, she, and I said, well, get what you want. She's getting something like that. And all these kids were in there. I think it was that movie Frozen. I think that's the name of that. Something. Like, I don't know much about all that stuff. And boy, them kids would just slap crazy about that stuff. You know, in fact, I think one of them told me, you got hair like one of the uh, characters in some Disney thing. Uh, white hair, something like that. I said, oh, okay, you know, I didn't know, you know. But you could see, oh. And I I remember one time uh, uh, the mother said, "Uh, we can't afford that, sweetheart. You can't. And I said, excuse me, ma'am, would you mind? And she looked at me, I said, would you mind? I'd like to buy that. What? I said, I'd like to to give it to your child. Oh, we don't take charity. You know what you just said? Mm. You don't take love. Listen, I'm not just trying to be nice. Why? Because I have, I have a few dollars. I'm, I'm doing pretty good. I just wanted to be a blessing. See what I'm saying? Just a blessing. I'll tell you the funniest story, one of the funniest things. Before I, uh, I had my own aircraft, I was flying Southwest Airlines. <laughs> I'll never forget. And Southwest Airlines has three ch- seats that face the people as well as just sitting this way. Like when you walk in, you got three this way and three this way. And it's up at the front, the, you, know, you know, the aisle seat, bulkhead, what it is. Okay. Well, I was coming out of Dallas. No, I, excuse me. I was coming out of Houston. And there was a store called, I, I can't believe it's yogurt. I think that's the name of it. Something like that. And I looked at it. And I said, yogurt. Now, when I think of yogurt, I think of the stuff that, I didn't like the taste of yogurt, but this is some good stuff. It's like, like ice cream. I, yeah. So I said, uh, so I, I said, can I taste it? Oh, yeah. They give you a little taste, you know, with a little spoon. Very small spoon, to tell you the truth. <laughs> you know? I said, give me a big cone of that. It was good. Mm. And I mean, so, I mean, I thought, oh, Jesus, I hope this thing don't fall over. Because here's the cone. That's the top of the cone. That thing is up this high. So, man, I'm walking toward the plane. That's when you could, you know, you, know, you, you, you had to get your own boarding pass and all that kind of stuff back here. So I'm holding like this. So I come in. True story. I was in the aisle seat bulkhead. All right, I sat down. And uh, so, and uh, I, I like, people can't get over, my daughter gets some, I always kind of bite the top of it. You know, like, like and Jody yeah, would get okay so mad. It's your ice cream. <laughs> but he always did it to Jody's ice cream. I just never liked it when you did that. I know it. And Jody said, Dad, Dad. You know, I like get the little swirl at the top. So watch that. Well, three children came on. They had some, uh, some things. They were flying to New Orleans. And so the uh, flight attendants, you know, sat them right in front of me. So now they're facing me. Now, one, there was a fattest little boy. Oh, he was fat, you know. And there was a, 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 a young uh, a, 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 a Creole black girl, which means she's black, but she's got beautiful blue eyes. Okay? She must have been maybe six, seven, at the, at the oldest, all of them. And there's a little fat white boy, this, uh, this little Creole girl. And then uh, it was another, another child. I think it's, I don't know what. She was a different nationality, too. Kids, look at ice cream. They went like this. <laughs> like this. <laughs> now, I'm an adult, and I'm thinking, and you, they didn't say nothing, but you, the little fat boy going like this. You know, and the, the girls like, and I looked at them, and I said, hello. And they went, hello. And the little Creole girl, she says, I'm Creole. I said, you are so beautiful. Thank you. And she's, look, she's like that. And watch my eyes. Thank you. And she's looking at that ice cream. Now, there was a man sitting on the other side, and he was prejudiced. You could tell. He wouldn't hardly look at those children because, you know, uh, one was black, uh, Creole, and, you know, and all that kind of stuff. And I thought to myself, I've had enough of this idiot. So I decided to do something. Call it what you want. Here we go. So I, I, I unbuckled my seat, but the plane had taken off. I said, y'all. Do y'all like, y'all like this? And all three of them, in unison, I said, would you like to lick some? 
So I got right close to him. I said, come here. All three of them, the little heads right here. I said, ready? Lick. <laughs> now, then three tongues come flying out. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm on the other side. We all licking. That little fat boy. <laughs> and I saw this guy go, ah, ah. Only because one of the children were black. I could see that. It just made me so mad I could spit. You know, boy, they, just, and they just loved it. Now, I shouldn't have done this. The, kid, this the, the kids didn't care. The kids didn't care. I didn't care. Man, if they're healthy as an ox and all that kind of stuff. Anyway, they just, boy, you, I said, and man, and I thought, and I, I saw it go, mm, mm. Oh, Lord, it's about ready to fall. And I shouldn't have done this. And I got over and I said, what's your problem? What? <laughs> and he fell in his lap. He go, oh, like that. You can see the kids go, oh. <laughs> and I went, oh, I'm so sorry. I knew it was going to fall. I shouldn't have done it. I had to repent. So the flight attendant, they so love. It's a good ice cream, though. I know. But he said, uh, 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 they said, oh. I could tell the flight attendant, they were mad at this guy. So they had to get it out of his clothes. And I said, I'll pay for your suit, whatever they that thing. I said, what's the matter with you, man? I said, these are children. And he didn't know what to say. And this happened. Everybody noticed it. See, prejudice, you're going to notice. They all applaud. Like I said, when is the plane going to take off? He said, in about seven minutes. I said, kids, I'm going to go out there and get your own ice cream. Oh. Oh, man. So I said, can, I said, can y'all, boy, I ran over there. I can't believe it's yogurt. And I thought, should I get a cup or a cone? I want to, <laughs> maybe they'd spill it on him again. <laughs> but I did get cups this time. And I got them all, they came back, and they just ate now. And I was just talking to them. And it don't take long to get from Houston to New Orleans on, on, a, on a jet, you know, on Southwest Airlines. Now, I want to tell you something, man. It was one of the greatest days of my life. What, you was, what were you doing imitating Christ? Mm -hmm. Maybe not the fallen part, but I mean, <laughs> let the kids lick the ice cream. They came off that, that thing. Of course, their parents were waiting on them, you know. The, the uh, uh, flight attendant had, had brought all three kids up. Mama, mama, and this man gave us some money, and they looked at me like that. And, and, you know, they had a little bit on their thing, and, 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 they, and they, they, they went, well, thank you. He's a nice man, mama. He's a very nice man. He looks like Santa Claus. His hair's so white, you know. <laughs> I said, your hair's it, been white since oh, your early 40s, huh? Well, I started late 30s. 33, late 30s. And uh, anyway, to make a long story short, all I did was imitate. I just showed some love. Mm -hmm. And got, and watch it, got applause for it. Yeah. Now, that's amazing to me. So what I did was take dominion over that situation. Mm hmm that's good. I just imitated God. You showed some extravagant love. Some extravagant those love. Those kids. And, you know, I don't think any of them got sick uh -huh. or anything of that nature. And I don't doubt that they're going to remember that all their lives. Mm -hmm. And that little, that's a little white boy. I'm sorry. Leave that little fat boy. I know. He looked at me. He goes, I wish I, you would quit saying I know. that. I know. Mean, but he was, you know but he you, was cute. I hear you were pretty I was fat, fat when I was a little boy, too. I'm fat now. <laughs> he, so I tell you that. he hated I, this mother bought him chubby jeans. Chubby jeans. Oh, I hated, hated chubby that. jeans. You know? Let him alone. I know, but he looked at me and said, sure I cute. like ice cream. And I said, I'll I buy you as much as you can eat. He go, Oh, <laughs> like I wish that about you fellow. when you were a little chubby boy. I was a, I'm was. i still chubby. You know me as a chubby boy. <laughs> no, you're an old chubby boy. Oh, listen to her. Y'all need little... to pray for her. She's taking dominion over read, me right now. Dominion. I want to read the Passion Translation of that same passage of Scripture, if you don't mind. It's oh, really but, uh, good. The ice cream store? No. <laughs> okay, go ahead. Yes. Of say. Ephesians chapter 5, verse Okay, one. go. It says, be imitators of God in everything you do, for then you will represent your father as his beloved sons and daughters and continue to walk surrendered to the extravagant love of Christ, for he surrendered his life as a sacrifice for us. His great love for us was pleasing to God oh, man, like an cool. aroma of adoration, a sweet healing fragrance. That's a blessing Isn't of the that Lord. That's beautiful. That's so wonderful. You see, so I'm, I'm telling you today, this border and trap is to let you know you can imitate God. And you may get persecuted over by some people, but it doesn't make any difference. Just be who God created you to be. Amen. And I want to read some testimonies. Yeah, Jesse. read This some. is from Naomi. She says, a Good afternoon, Brother Jesse and Sister Kathy. I love your teachings on faith. 
Our whole country depends on tourism, the Bahamas, that's where they're writing oh, from. Bahamas, yes. So, so many of us were forced to live by faith during COVID-19. Mm -hmm. Many are still without work, including myself. But God gave many of us wisdom to work for ourselves, to provide for our families. I believe nothing is impossible with God. He proves his word is truth, and he never forsakes us. Thank God for grandparents and parents who taught us how to pray. Praise the Lord. Jesus is my supply. I have no choice either. I believe it or I'll sink. To God be the glory. He is real. See, that's not a beggar. That's a no, person believing put, God. They've been imitating they only, God. We are proud. Thank you for sending and that in. And their parents and grandparents taught them and trained them Generational. in the ways of God. They followed his, their, their parents' example. Imitating him. Right. Imitated their parents because their parents Ooh. were imitating God, and they know that God is real and Jesus is Read some more. Can I some more in there? I love that. Oh, yeah, lots of this. Watching from Maui, Hawaii. Maui. Greetings. Haya says, greeting from Sashaquan. How do you say it? What about Sashaquan. the Maui one? I thought, wait, wait, you're back Canada. in Canada now. Oh, no, there's lots oh, of different Oh, I see. Ones. Okay. This one I can't pronounce either. Maybe you can. Good. Wendy says, good morning from Kunura. Kununura. Kununura, Kununura, remote Kununura, Western Australia. Remote Western yeah. Australia. It says, when we were first saved, we went to see you in Queensland in 2002. In the prayer line, you walked past me and stopped at my husband. You said to him, we might be neighbors in heaven. You know, you often will say that to people oh, in, a, in, a, in a salvation line. I just line. love people. I do. I, you know, because yeah. remember you would say when people would come, I mean, for years you've been doing this, you still I might do live it. next door to you. Yeah, just talking to people who just came forward, just asked Jesus to come to their life and were born again and reminding them that heaven is a real place. Well, finish reading that. I like okay, that. Okay, and it says, and you said to him, we might be neighbors in heaven. As a young Christian, I was jealous, and I thought... <laughs> What about me? <laughs> it says, now I am completely over that and enjoy telling our Jesse story. Thank you both for your ministry. Isn't and that wonderful? was 2002. That. 2002. And this they is got 2021. They, they were in the Oh, I've been traveling a lot. Oh, yeah. Ooh, I still do it. And you know what? I want you all to be, you people that are in Australia, you don't have offices in Australia. In Maroochydore, Queensland is where my offices are. Have something. You can call there and they're blessings of the Lord. We have Russell and Kay and Jody. They did blessings of God. They've been with me quite a long time, I think over, over 20, 20 years, years. Mm -hmm. and it's a blessing. And I want Australia to open up because I, I'm ready to go back. Ready I want to go, go, go. I want to go to Perth. Perth. I, I want to. You know, I did a whole complete tour. Remember that in Australia? I told them we, I'd go to every what they call Providence ter territory. Uh, territories. I mean, I went from Including, top to uh, bottom, even to Hobart. 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 I went out there, and then also New Zealand. And, and I need to go back, and I have the plane to take me there, and I can do all that and preach that gospel again, but I just needed to open up. And so be praying and believing God that we can schedule it and go, man. Mm -hmm. And you people are watching in the United Kingdom, oh, God, I can't wait till I go back, Lord Jesus. And as soon as that gets taken care of, it looks like it's starting to happen. Uh, we're going to do that. And also Italy. Oh, I love Italy. Italy is one of my favorite countries. <laughs> I want to go preach over there. And then Moscow. Glory to God, I went and preached there. Well, you know, right now, we're preaching all over the world because oh, of this yes. uh, social media. Where you've been able to get out even yeah. during the COVID. You know, the enemy probably wanted to shut everything down. Oh, he, he did. But he tried why to. did he mess up? Because did he it opened it up. Even Amen. more people. We're reaching more people okay. than we ever G have. Give us another testimony. I love all of these. This one's from Judy. She says, thank you so much for breaking the word down and teaching it in a way that everyone can understand. Make God continue to bless your ministry. You know, I tried it. Let me tell you something about the Word of God. It's a double-edged sword. One side cuts the devil, the other side cuts you. See, so you got to gotta, gotta lace this thing. Mm -hmm. And uh, because if you don't understand it, it's no use to hear it. See, faith comes by hearing. You got to hear it and understand it and walk in it. And I really believe that this boardroom chat here will change you. You'll begin to imitate God. If anybody right. say something, say, well, I'm just doing what the that's Lord says. That's not what God would do in that no, situation. That's right. And so you try to do what he would do, the way Amen. Jesus did when he was on earth. They have Marianne is watching from Ireland, she said. This was sent in from the, the boardroom uh, testimonies from YouTube. So people are watching us on YouTube, on YouTube. and everything. Yeah. Be sure and share that as well. What did she, what, what uh, she say? It just says watching from. Oh, Sometimes great. I Thank just you. do that. Sometimes I make a comment. This one says good morning from Australia again. Uh, hi from Cape Town. Please pray for my for a financial breakthrough. This one says, uh, this one's from South Africa. Virginia says, I love these teachings. I learn something new every time. Cape Town, that's a beautiful place, Cape Town. I preached there at uh -huh. the Three Arts Center. Yeah, remember yeah, that? Yeah, I remember yeah. that. That's where you fell down. <laughs> 
Yes, he would remember. She fell my off the platform. Embarrassing moment. She fell off the platform, and the pastor caught her. I thought that was so nice of him. <laughs> I'm not, I don't know if I should go into detail. I always feel like I got to explain. Jesse gives like the highlights, and I feel like I got to give the whole story. I, see, I look 20 years older than her, but at least I wasn't falling off the platform. <laughs> That's what he did. That's what he did. Actually, what happened was I, he called me to come up to the platform, and this platform was really steep and carpeted, and they had a, a tear in the carpet, which I didn't notice, and the heel of my shoe caught it as I was going down. And I could just see myself falling in slow, mo slow motion. You know, a lot of churches have what we call in our church the Ministry of Helps, and they assist and they help ladies when they go up right. and down the platform, especially if they have heels on, just as a courtesy. And uh, <laughs> they didn't have that in that church. We have it in ours. Anyway, but the pastor was so kind. The he was quick. No, he wasn't that kind. Yes, he was. He, he was slow. <laughs> by the time he finally figured it out, he caught my caught me by my elbows instead of my face hitting the floor. My <laughs> knees hit the floor, ripped all my stockings up, and then of course Jesse rode that pony for all of oh, worth. I thought, I, I, all I, I the rest said, of the service. I may look a lot older, but I ain't falling off that's the platform. What he said. <laughs> I said, well, that's what he is. I said, get the knife out my back. He, he wasn't concerned. Yes, I was concerned. Praise <laughs> the Lord. He didn't show it. <laughs> see, she's taking dominion But over. see, he keeps, he, he still brings me around even though I mess up. Oh, I mess up a lot myself. <laughs> but see, when you be there for imitators of God, I, got, I, I, I know there's two people who watch over me all my life, God and Kathy. And both of them will correct me for some crazy reason or another. You know, God's been so good and gracious to us. You know, you can tell that we enjoy each other, but what we enjoy more than anything is our relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. And we enjoy our relationship with you. To all our wonderful partners who help us do this, mm -hmm. none of this could be possible. Going to Western Australia back in 2002. Partners who help us preach this gospel. They send in their faithful financial support. You know, it's been happening for 45 years, and yet I, it, 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 it just amazes me. Then I thought, you know what they're doing? They're doing what Jesus did. They're imitating God. Right, right. Jesus would feed people when they were hungry. He would just bless them, minister to them, and that's what we do. Meet whatever the need was. So I want to thank all our partners for helping. You know, so I, I hope I say thank you enough. All of you who are so courteous and kind to support this ministry. And I say it all the time, and I'm very proud of this. That's why I say it. 100% of what you give goes into world evangelism. We're debt-free, been debt-free since 1982 in our foreign offices, mm -hmm. as well as American offices. I mean, we're just debt-free. Yeah. So if you send 20 bucks, the whole $20 goes into world evangelism. Mm -hmm. Isn't that a blessing? And what I like about it more than just you doing it, me and Kathy do it. That's right. We are partners just like you. So if you'd like to be a partner, I felt a little Lord to say, if you'd like to be a partner, you can write us, or you can, if you can go to jdm.org, which is our website. If you'd like to give, you can hit the donate button. If you don't want to give, don't. You don't have to. You can use PayPal if you want. You can text to give. All the different ways of doing things. You know, we, we have that ability. But if, if you don't want to, you don't have to. Mm -hmm. But I'll tell you one thing. For every dollar given in my ministry, I'll get a soul into the kingdom. I mean, I mean you, I'm a soul man, son. I'm hunting. I'm on the hunt for what God said to do. Go in the world and preach this gospel to every creature. Right. Got another testimony? Well, yeah, and actually I want to read a few that are from partners that I thought oh, would great. bless you, Jesse. Good. This is from Marcrita. Who? Marcrita. Okay. It says, you two are truly a blessing to me, and since I be have become a partner with this ministry, God has increased my substances. Praise God. I look forward to reading your posts on Facebook you know, Kathy, because it always encourages I me. I tell people the anointing of the increase is on. I'm telling you, it, I'm not just saying that to get something from you. I want to get something to you. It's on me. Mm -hmm. People, sport, they, they, you're going to get black. That lady in the Bahamas, yeah. mark my words. Watch and that. this girl named Kathy, who, who spells it with K-A-T-H-E-Y, which is really sweet. I like it. It says, she says, I know God has blessed me since becoming a partner last July. I heard that the sermon on how money works. Yeah. And I never knew about seed. I know now, and God has honored my giving. Praise Listen God. Listen to this one, Jesse. This one is from uh, someone named Nicole. She says, she's kind of promoting it for us. We, she says, go to JDM.org. There is a place for prayer requests and a number you can call to talk to an actual person to pray with. I've emailed them a prayer request and received returned letters, emails, and even phone calls back. Everything they have prayed about with me has come to pass Amen. rather quickly, too. 
Jesse is great soil. Isn't that beautiful? Now, that's a blessing. Thanks, Nicole, I, for writing that. Yeah, because and, and, that's true. I don't mean that pridefully. I told the Lord, I don't want people giving them my ministry and, and they don't get blessed. We have such a kind staff, though. You oh, know, they're yeah. They're answering yeah. those letters. They're helping us, and we get some of them, well, too. We... I, I tell my staff and it's part of the service that when, someone, when they, someone's calling and, and talking to you, they're they talking to me. They're talking to you. Me and you, they're talking to Jesse well, they, and Kathy, and we to want to act thing. properly that way. See? But our staff imitates us. They're a representative Amen. of us and what we believe in the same way that all of us are imitators of God. Sure. So we're one beautiful team that uh, God has called really together great. to And we And we have such a unique staff. We have Hispanic people. We have black people. We have Cajun people. We have young people. We have Creole people. We have people. old people. Yeah. We got, uh, all, man, we got all kinds of people. And, uh, and the same is true with our partnership base. I mean, they're from every nation, everywhere. every creed, every color. People. And Amen. we're all working together as a team to reach people and change lives one solo time. You know, we just, we just did a Q&A, uh, live Q&A. And a lot of people don't this know week, there was, yeah. counting us, there was 20 people there to make it happen. Yeah, including you and I. Yeah, well, I think I included, yeah. Uh, and uh, I thought, you, people don't realize what it takes to do all these things. So to all you people that helped us, and there's, right now in this room while I'm doing it, one, two, three, four, five, there's six of them, and she's and Becky's over there doing my my my, uh, uh, my audio. So if I sound funny, blame her. <laughs> no, no, no. She, she gonna do it right. Now why do you take that angle? If I sound great. Thank yes, her. yeah. I'm thanking you, Becky. I thank you. Yeah. Hallelujah. See, I'm working you see, on him. She will correct me, but I didn't think it as a shot. I thought it was trying well, to be a blessing. Sounded, yeah. Yes, Hallelujah. It would have been better the other way. Oh, it would have. Well, why don't you say it? I did. Oh, you did. Praise God. Hallelujah. Thank anyway. you, Rebecca. <laughs> thank you, Rebecca. <laughs> I call her Becca and everything. So it's such a blessing. I hope you enjoy these boardroom chats as much as we do. We do. And you know, and people don't know. I'll say this, and then we'll close out. We've been going pretty long. How do you get all these subjects? Well, uh, I got it about three minutes before <laughs> we came to this table. I was doing some other opening and closings and stuff like that, and the Lord began to deal with me as I was driving in. He said, go to Ephesians 5.1. What I'm going to say, I'll tell you when you get there. So remember this. You've been made in God's image. Yes. And in his likeness, act like God, talk like God, be like God, smell like God, do like God. And guess what? You'll become everything God said you could. Right. You have anything more to say there? I'm just thinking that it's something that God has given us the ability to do. The Bible tells us he's given every man the measure of faith, Ooh, meaning like every that. person. So we have been created in his image and given divine ability. We have been given everything that's necessary, the Bible tells us, for life so and godliness because of our relationship with him. So we're related to our father, Amen. our heavenly father. So we need to be imitating and acting as he would if he was on the earth in the same way that Jesus did, that he only did what his father, he saw his father do and he only said what he heard his father say. Amen. And that's what the Holy Ghost does too as well. Amen. He's doing that same job. Amen. He's, he's carrying on the family tradition, the family business, That's it. to go into all the world and preach the gospel to you, every creature. You make an offer, you don't <laughs> refuse, you see. So yes. when people ask me sometimes, excuse me, what's your name? I say, my name is Jesse Duplantis Christ. They go, who, what? I'm, I'm born again. I'm walking in his anointing. His name is in me. Mm -hmm. Boy, and it opens up oh, a conversation. It's such a blessing. Mm -hmm. Well, until next time, this is Jesse and Kathy saying thank you for watching. Yes. To all our partners, thank you for supporting. And, to, and you'll never be a day without prayer. Partners as well as anybody else yes. watching. And the lady gave the uh, 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 testimony there in the Bahamas, how she's standing. God told her, I believe a great blessing is coming to Amen. you. I felt that in my spirit when Kathy was reading your uh, testimony. Thank you very, very, very Naomi. much. Each, and all, each, all of you. And till next time, this is Jesse and Kathy saying, we'll see you soon. God bye bless bye. you. Bye-bye. This media is copyrighted by Jesse Duplantis Ministries for the private use of our audience. Any other use of this media or of any pictures or accounts without Jesse Duplantis Ministries' consent is strictly prohibited.